All right, we are here at the Dallas Film Festival with Kelly Sears, director of Jupiter Overseas. <laughs> Please tell us a little bit about the film. Um, this film is a story of a haunted meteorologist who starts off kind of smarmy and uh, hurricane thrill jockey, and over the course of the piece, slowly starts to be undone by these dreams of a weather system that he's been having. Um, it's part of a larger project called Orbit Films, where these uh, film curators asked a bunch of independent filmmakers to remake an element of the solar system. So there's a different filmmaker making a film for each planet. So there's a different story for Mars, Earth, Mercury, Venus, all of the planets. And I got Jupiter and asked them, do I actually have to make a film exactly about Jupiter? And they said, have fun with it. So. I started it in Jupiter, Florida, and it starts on Earth and it ends up on the planet Jupiter. Oh, how fun. <laughs> now, the character of Jupiter, Elysius, is a mythological character. That's Tell me a little bit about that. I was trying to bring every reading of the term Jupiter into the story. So Elysius means of weather and lightning. And so I was thinking about the weather in Jupiter, Elysi in Jupiter Florida, which is right on the coast, uh, where it gets hit by a lot of hurricanes. And then thinking about you know the planet Jupiter. I didn't know anything about the planet Jupiter when I started, so I read up on it. And it's actually kind of a fascinating planet. They have the Great Red Spot, which is essentially the most epic storm ever. You know it. Uh, <laughs> it eats other storms. It's about three times the size of Earth. It's been going for over 400 years. So I was thinking about starting off with weather on Earth and using kind of the idea of storms, of lightning, um, in this mythological sense to connect the two locations. That's really cool how you brought it all together. You know, you started in, on Earth and in Jupiter, Florida, and then took it to the planet. So that's great. Now, you're also the animator on the film. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about some of the animation. Um, you know, I'm a one-person production team. I, I love animation. I have my own take on it. I'm in the animation program tonight, so it'll be interesting to see how it how this piece fits in with the others. But you know, since I'm a one person production team, nothing I ever make is going to be as slick as the studio. So you kind of figure out how to, or or a bigger team. You know, um, so you kind of try to find a way that you can play to your strength. So I I, I think I have a unique style where I, this piece I was taking live action. Um, actors and mixing them with images from meteorology books, science books, so all the environments are based in paper um, and he's composited inside these worlds. Wow. So what were some of the elements that you used in your gathering of materials process? Um, one was I happened to be in LA for two weeks where I used to live and I, um, I had about a month to make this so I, I wrote a voiceover very quickly and recorded it and found an actor and shot with him and the actor I used is also a musician and he made some music for me for the piece and then I came back to Texas and very conveniently it rained for two weeks straight over the summer and so there was nothing else to do but stay in the studio and uh, composite them all into a world together um, but yeah it's kind of I'd record the elements and came back and tried to find a way to make it <laughs> to make this bizarre story work yeah well now speaking to different animators you know of all ages what is the primary kind of requirements that you go through when you're searching for some of the, the materials, like some of the photographs or some of the like pictures or write-ups or anything that you're looking for to help build the animation? Mm -hmm. I mean, I really have a very low to the ground practice. I, I bought one meteorology book at a used bookstore, and so that's where most of the sets come from in this. And you know, whenever I go out to thrift stores or walk by a garage sale, I'll see if there's any interesting images I can use to build a set. It's, you know, I don't have expensive cameras and I don't really have a, have a crew so it's a really how can you make films with nothing you know it's a very economical practice and it's one that you can really I have a computer I have a scanner and I have a small camera that I can take photos on and all my films usually come out of those materials oh that's awesome so you're working in primary like Photoshop and Illustrator after effects all that mm -hmm. and I also have a stop-motion rig in my studio space too so just with my small Canon rebel I just take a bunch of you know do stop-motion animation and combine that with other elements and After Effects. Well, that's very cool. Now, you had a month to do this, so were you working night and day on it? Was it kind of manageable? Was it yeah, crazy? Yeah, it was just, you know, so, you know, once you get into a project, it's just kind of, you get in there and it's really fun to get lost and try to find your way through it, and uh, so it worked out fine. Oh, wow. Well, that's very exciting. Now, you were here at Dallas last year. What brought you back? Sarah and James <laughs> sent me an email saying they'd love to play this film. Um, and so it's great to be back. And you know, last year was my first year at Dallas, and I just met all these wonderful Dallas filmmakers. Um, we're staying with some of them this year, and it's just a really friendly, wonderful festival. So 
Sarah and James programming is just fantastic. So I lived down in Houston. I got to drive up, see some great movies, and see some old friends. Mm, that is that is fantastic, and I think that's definitely the hope for the film festival. You know, for everything across the board, program wise, as well as just the community at large. Oh, absolutely. Well, we're glad to have you back, Kelly. Thank you. And where can people go to find out more about Jupiter Lucy? A couple places. Um, this film premiered at Sundance, and Sundance hosts a handful of shorts from that year online. So if you go to the Sundance um, Screening Room channel on YouTube, you can find it there. But also um, keep an eye out. There's a national tour going around of all the films. It premiered in Houston a couple weeks ago, and I think they wanted to premiere, premiere it there because that's the, the home base of NASA. Um, the, there's a very non-traditional screenings happening with it. They're trying to do screenings under the stars and planetoriums. Um, there's a screening coming up in Copernicus's hometown. They are going to project it into space. So very kind of non-traditional orbit-related venues. And more about where it's going to be playing can be seen at orbitfilm.com. And how about in Jupiter, Florida? Is it going to be there too? That's a good question. Let's find, we'll find a way to make that happen. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you.